Welcome back to The Justice Factor as we speak to one of South Africa's great minds, Professor Zeik Simda, about the arts, politics and the future of South Africa. Are you sad that, that all this research that you, you found and that you mined and, and, and put into this story so beautifully is, is largely housed in the Americas? Yes. To get m much of this research, it's not yet. That's the saddest thing because, you see, although a lot of the research that I did for this novel uh, came from the Bangona people. The Bangona people are part of the Bavenda because they've always had wonderful oral traditions that date back to the kingdom of Mapungubwe from their king Shiria Denga, who was the last king of Mapungubwe, of the, of the Rapuli royal house. They've all, always told those stories, you see, because they are the direct descendants of the Mapungubwe people. Now, when you take the stories that the Bangona people tell, and then you take the archaeology that was done by South Africans, so South African scholars, mostly Afrikaner scholars in the 1930s, but then later uh, scholars like Thomas Huffman uh, and his students, you know, from Vets, who did all this uh, archaeology. But then you find that a lot of the material that I used is not available in South Africa. I had to go to the Africana Museum in, uh, in Chicago a at Northwestern um, uh, University, which is where they have the biggest collection of African books and uh, archives under one roof in the world. In other words, all the material from, from Africa you know, is, is, is in America. In that vein, do you find that your work um, I mean, uh, for me, I look at this book, I look at, um, I look at the heart of redness, I look at the whale collar, which speaks so powerfully to our condition here in South Africa and yes. our past and our, and our present. Uh, and yet you've, been, you've received awards and all kinds of things all over the world. Are you appreciated more by the outside world than, than by us here? I'm also reminded of the fact that you didn't work for seven years uh, and until you were called up by Ohio University. Yes. Well, when I was unemployed for, for seven years, uh, and then I had to go to America to, to, to feed m my children, I also thought that, uh, well, I was not appreciated here. But actually, I'm highly appreciated in this country. Mm. Highly, highly so. I was amazed how appreciated I am. For instance, you find that um, uh, people generally read my work. I mean, people I would never have imagined read my books, you know. Generally, I, I find that institutions of, of higher learning, that, that's why, you know, you, uh, universities like University of Cape Town, University of the Free State have uh, awarded me honorary doctorates, you know, because they appreciate my work. But even a town like Stakesprate, for instance, mm -hmm. in the Eastern Cape, organized what they call a Zaxum Dad Day, something they had never done before or something I, I've never heard of before in South Africa, where a town, through its various institutions, in, in, including the Department of Education, mm. organize a day for a writer. And then schools gather from all over the district, you know, to perform plays and sing and so on, to celebrate this one writer. Mm. Does that mean you feel that, that you know, you've always been seen as a bit of an outsider. Um, you, 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 I think in one of the interviews, Nelson Mandela said, no, he's too outspoken. We mustn't put him on the SABC board. Yes. That your outsider status has sort of fallen away, that you're being embraced. Well, uh, I don't know if uh, it has fallen away because, you see, my outsider status is also within me, you, you, you know. Uh, I'm not only just an outsider because people have made me an outsider. I'm also an outsider internally, you know, um, because I have kept away from things generally, you know, because I would rather sit there and create my art than, you know, um, I, I actually do things. I mean, I go to the rural areas and I work with uh, rural women uh, beekeeping projects in, in the Eastern Cape uh, uh, and so on. But that's as far as I, I go. You, you don't see me in your cocktail parties with, with your ministers uh, and so on and so forth. I don't as associate with, with, with those types, you see. 
Uh, so but that self-imposed uh, outsiderness, you know, uh, which allows me to create my work, you know, without any interference from, 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 from anybody. You've been very outspoken on many, many issues uh, yeah. about the evolution of our, of our democracy, about South Africa uh, and where it's going. Yeah. Do you feel that the country is on, a, is on the right path, that it's doing things right, that I can raise my kids here? Yes. Oh, yes. I celebrate this country and I celebrate our democracy. The fact that there is a Justice Malala who can sit there and question these ministers and so on is, is something to be celebrated. Of course, I mean, politicians will always be politicians. They, they will try to wiggle out, they, they, they will try, I mean, they, they will try to suppress democracy. That's what politicians do all over the world. In other words, what our politicians are doing here is, is not uniquely South African. Politicians do that all over the world. They want to get away with as much as possible. You, uh, you see that? So it is the checks and balances that we have that w will, you, you know, we will stop them from, from doing that. And up to this point, you see, I see them working very well, you see. I see, for instance, uh, we have a very robust press, you know, um, which continues to function. But then I would say to you, what yeah. about the protection of state information bill? Uh, what about, you know, some of the public attacks, if you will, on someone like the public protector who is hugely, hugely admired? It, don't those give you pause to say, hmm, is this, is this the way we should be? Is this the way we should be doing things? It's not the way we should be doing things. But they are, they are not unique things, because I see them happening everywhere where politicians are trying to get away with murder. Our politicians are very corrupt in this country. And if there were no checks and balances that we, we have, they would indeed get away with it. But for the mere fact that they continue to be, to be questioned and they have to account, they are made to, to account, gives me hope. You see, for instance, I went to the Eastern Cape with a group of young people, equal education uh, youngsters, you see, who are fighting very hard to improve our situation in South Africa. What has happened is that when we were there, they demanded the officials of the education department in the province should come and answer questions. And guess what? They all came, you see, to account to these young people. You see, things like those that I never see in other places give me a, a, a lot of optimism about this country. Also the young people, because everywhere I travel, I find young South Africans doing things, doing wonderful things in various fields of life. You see, all that tells me that actually, despite everything else, despite all the rot, because there's a lot of rot, we are moving forward, you see, yes. These young people face so many problems. You have HIV, which hasn't been defeated yet. Yes. You have unemployment. We have 52% unemployment in this country. You have an education system that is failing a lot of young people. Oh, yes. When you see pockets like the one you saw in the Eastern Cape with yes. se uh, Section 27, do, do you believe that they can come through with the leadership that we have? Not with the leadership that we have. You see, the leadership that we have is thoroughly, thoroughly rotten. And is getting even more rotten by the day. And the sadness of it all is that, you see, they, people are all, always protecting one another and encouraging this rot, you see. But one is always hopeful that a system like that will, will not last forever. It will either overthrow itself or will be overthrown by outside forces, you see. 
It would only be said, of course, if it is overthrown in a violent manner that will then destroy our democratic institutions. Do you think that would happen? Or I hope that, will find well, I hope that doesn't happen. Mm. But already, I mean, we already see, you know, things, you know, we already see these protests that are happening, pockets of protests that, that are happening, that if these people continue the way they, they, they are, you see, you might have an outbreak because, you see, people are getting impatient. You see, you see that? So in as, in as much as I'm very optimistic from the things that I see happening, in as much as I also admire the fact that our democracy has survived up to this point and it continues to survive despite, not because, but despite of the rot, you see, one cannot but worry, of course, you know, that um, one, thing, one day maybe there will be an outburst of things and when that happens, of course, it always comes with the destruction of democratic institutions, you see, that have been working so wonderfully, well, most of them so far, or some of them. After the break, we continue our conversation with Professor Zeig Mda. News that moves. ENCA.com.